In the last video, I told you that social anthropology is a discipline asking the question, what does it mean to be human? Both in a general sense and in a specific sense. It does this by examining human culture, society and relationships and comparing what we see in one place with humans from another place. When we do this, we look at both the similarities and differences between people and we try to create laws and theories about what it is to be human. Moreover, I told you the fundamental premise upon which social anthropology rests. There is no normal or natural. When you see the world through these anthropological lenses, everything becomes weird and strange. You wonder, how do things get to be like this and why? This is important because it allows you to see the world from another point of view. You can imagine living in someone else's shoes, seeing the world as they do, understanding why they think, speak and act like they do. All this is the necessary foundation to something we call in the discipline ethnography. No more talking the talk, we're walking the walk now. Ethnography is where an anthropologist lives with another group of humans for a long time. Long enough to truly, really understand their worldview and everything in it. Once they finish studying this group of people, they write about it and talk about it, helping the rest of us understand them as well as they do. Moreover, they analyse and compare what they saw with other ethnographic studies, figuring out how this can help us answer our main question, what does it mean to be human? So why care about any of this? Because the skills and unique perspectives required for social anthropology and ethnography can be used in your everyday life too, and in fact enhance it. Putting these glasses on is not just about realising there's no normal, that everything is in fact quite strange, it's about seeing your everyday life and everything in it in a totally new light. What's this new light, you ask? Well, let me explain. So the first step to putting on these glasses, we already know. There's no normal or natural. The second step is to realise there are two realities here on planet Earth. One, physical reality. Two, human reality. There is the actual physical thing, and then the layers of human meaning we wrap around it. For example, look at this thing. What do you see? Probably just a piece of dark wood covered in pretty beads, right? Does it mean anything to you? I'm guessing not. Well, I got this from the Maasai in Tanzania, and there they call it a talking stick. It's used mainly during tribal meetings, and this piece of wood determines who's allowed to speak and who's not. Whoever has this is allowed to talk, whoever doesn't, isn't. Now, you and I both know the wood isn't actually doing this itself. It's not actually controlling who's talking or not. It's a piece of wood. Hey, did you hear if I gave you this to you during the middle of a conversation with your friends, yes. would your friends all stop talking and listen to you? Probably not, because for them, yeah, it's just a piece of wood with pretty beads on it. Hey guys, did you see what I got on holiday? No, I couldn't believe... <gasps> oh. Yeah, I know, oh. They haven't designated any meaning or significance to it. They just see it as a piece of wood with beads on it. And so they carry on talking. However, for the Maasai, they have. And so this piece of wood means something. It's doing something. For them, it actually controls who talks and who doesn't. So we have the physical reality of this object. It's a piece of wood covered in beads. Then we have the human reality the layers of meaning and significance wrapped around it which a certain people have given it. Perhaps these two clips from my childhood I remember can help you understand this a bit better. Here's another catchphrase. Say what you see. Here's all. Reach for money. Reach for money's good, it's not right. Joe? Grabbing the money. Grabbing the money's not right. Hand over the money. Hand. You see the hand that's over the money. Say what you see. You're back in play. Here's another catchphrase. I'm taking that stick of yours and draw me a map up. Oh, hey! To find it, you must look beyond what you see. What the heck is that supposed to mean? It means look beyond what you see. Get a lot of the monkey getting all existential on me. 
Like in that TV show Catchphrase, you often just have to say what you see. Strip away all the human layers and meaning and just say what you see. This is the physical reality. And like Rafiki tells Simone, once you strip something down to its physical reality, you've said what you've seen. Go beyond what you see. Look for the unseen, as it were, the layers and meaning and significance that people potentially have attached to it. This is the human reality. Now you can do this with anything. For example, wedding rings at a wedding. Just circular bits of metal put onto people's fingers. Money. Just rectangular bits of paper or circular pieces of metal. The word dad. A particular sound produced from a person's mouth. The OK sign. Just touching your index finger and thumb together. The queen. Just an old female human who dresses quite nicely and lives in a big house. However, you know that in each example I gave, they're not actually what I deconstructed them to be, are they? Money is not just circular bits of metal and rectangular pieces of paper with some pictures on it. Money, in most societies now, dictates a lot of our lives. We need it to buy the things to keep us alive. It shapes how we spend our time in order to get money. And what we do with our money can affect our relationships, our friendships, our social status. The word dad is not just a sound we produce from our mouths. It donates a certain person in our lives who we feel connected to by blood and also indicates a whole idea about family structure, how people are connected and related to each other and what responsibilities they have towards each other. Each example means something. They do things in the world and they have significance. They've had ideas, beliefs and meanings attached to those things by people which affect how they speak, act and think in the world. However, those meanings and significances will not be the same wherever you go. The sun, for example, is a big part of every human's life, but each culture interprets it differently. For example, in the science-based Western society, we see the sun as a big ball of radioactive helium-hydrogen gas emitting light. However, in other societies, the sun is seen as a god that we have to worship and sacrifice to because he controls and affects our everyday lives. And so, we have a physical reality, the actual unlabeled thing in the world. And then, a human reality, the physical thing wrapped in layers of human meaning, beliefs and ideas. A reality almost as real as the physical reality itself. And I think this is what makes humans special. It distinguishes us from all other life forms on Earth. It's what makes us human. So once you have separated these two realities and can see it in your everyday life, you can start doing the really fun bit which anthropologists do during their ethnographies. Finding out how these ideas, beliefs and meanings came about and why. To deconstruct and make sense of everything. To do this, you have to observe, question and interact. First, observe what people are doing and what they're saying. Use all the senses and try to get a general understanding from this. Then, ask them about what they're doing, saying and experiencing. What, where, when, why, who, how and also what if questions. Finally, take part and interact with these people. Join in. You will discover lots of hidden rules, categorizations and classifications that help organize and structure these people's everyday lives. This is when you truly come to understand the world as they do. Now, after you figure that all out, you take a step back and analyze this all objectively, placing the micro in the context of the macro. That is, money and the way people use it won't make sense to you unless you understand the economic system that it's found in. A crucifix doesn't make sense if you don't understand the religion of Christianity or what religion is. So this is step three as it were, placing the part in the context of the whole. And this is another one of the cool things about social anthropology. Through it you can end up studying politics, philosophy, economics, music, religion, literature, art, science. With humanity as our subject, anything human related is a possible area of study. To end, I hope in these two videos I have been able to impart onto you a way of seeing the world that took me three years to learn at university. These glasses are not just reserved for anthropologists, they can and should be worn by anyone. They help you navigate the tricky social and cultural terrain of human social life, allow you to form more relationships and stronger relationships with others. And overall, the world becomes a lot more interesting, tolerable, and makes a lot more sense. Oh.